Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking It. Steve, about to react to this vid by Podcast Cringe. It's titled, When Funny Meets Cringe. So when I was reacting to the whole Andrew Schultz drama or whatever, somebody told me to react to this video. And this goes over the whole situation with Shane. Uh, I guess where Shane basically told Andrew he's not funny and there was like some tension or something between the two. Not sure what happened, but yeah, we're going to find out in this video, obviously. So let's see what took place. Let's watch. <laughs> Yo, how did you fall for that, Shane? How did you take an Uber here from Queens to fall for that, Shane? <laughs> Dude, you guys are so good. Ah, uh, geez, here we go. Welcome back to another video, guys. Shout out to my ground level crew. I should probably apologize in advance because fuck me dead, this was cringe. And not just normal cringe. I'm talking leg slapping, arm grabbing, nipple squeezing cringe. The type of cringe that can only come out of the flagrant studios. But there was some educational value in this episode as well because never has there been a more explicit example of funny versus cringe than when Shane Gillis joins Andrew Schultz and his boy band for a three hour Not sit down. Boy band. But just before we get into this train wreck of a podcast used in this video are protected by the fair use doctrine safeguarded by title 17 of the United States code. Now, as for Andrew Schultz, he should probably stop drinking, especially in front of cameras when speaking into a microphone. The episode started out with a few questions about Shane's interest in history. For those of you who don't know, Shane uses historical events in his stand-up routines, and it's pretty fucking funny. So Schultz and his boy band ended up asking for Shane's take on British imperialism, don't like, don't like especially Andrew. considering Akash Singh has an Indian background. And Gillis just starts dropping bangers off the cuff. Take a look. Then what about British imperialism? Can you explain any of that for Akash? I don't know, that's too funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have no experience with it. They turned India into a, like a Walmart for 400 years. <laughs> <laughs> for 400 years. It was a, <laughs> it was a company. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, it was a company <laughs> longer than America has been a country. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, dude, a clearance sale. Yeah. Going out of business. Fire sale, bro. It's a liquidation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so here we have Gillis on a roll and Akash is getting a little bit butt hurt. Probably because Gillis is bagging India and being funny at the same time. And to make matters even worse, Akash proves how much of a hack he is by not getting Shane's joke. <laughs> you guys love trains. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. chicks on the air. Is all of India autistic? <laughs> yeah. It might actually be. the most emotional, but I'm curious to know where really? you're going with this. Like, no, the I just love trains, love bothering women on Oh, now yeah. you want to get butthurt over oh, some emotional Oh, that's fucking jokes. great. So then Akash is sitting there all butthurt, and his boy Schultzy decides to lean in on the India jokes because Shane is making him look like a hack as well. But the difference is Schultzy goes for the low blow, but thankfully Gillis saves the day and makes everything funny again. Yo, how does Indian, how do Indians feel about them going to the moon and there still being people struggling? We're proud we made it to the moon. It's when you're on your way up, you're proud of everything, and then when you're at the top, you're not proud of anything. Oh, uh, so you're still it? in the stage yeah. where, like, you identify with all the greatness. Yeah, look happening. what we can do, man. We made it there. Now we can fix, we'll fix everything here, too, but look what we can do. Now, and do America's so spoiled. Now it's time for plumbing. Now it's plumbing time. Yeah. <laughs> and I still could be wrong, but I saw signs all over, all over India that said to let, T O L E T. And I was like, there's just random signs about like, are they leasing apartments? And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. toilet. Yeah. Toilet. Oh, fuck. Okay. No, you have Let a, me break down. They're leasing what's a renting space, this right? This is just next level cringe. They're selling space. So, most of you probably already realized what Akash is talking about. A sign that says. He's in to toilet? He's <laughs> basically a sign. He did they selling toilets? Or a rental property. It doesn't mean fucking toilet. It means it's available to rent. Yeah. And even when they try to correct him, he still leans into it. And I mean, he's just the... way out of his depth in this conversation. It's like watching a bunch of schoolboys hanging out with their big brother, and it just doesn't work. These guys are fucking hacks next to Shane Gillis, and oh man, just watch how it pans out. It's just signs <laughs> like, hey, you need a shitter? Because I'll sell you one. Got it. Nice. Oh, there's Everywhere. no way he thinks But that's, that. we need toilets still to that point. Yeah. 
Am I wrong? Yeah, you're wrong. No, it's not a scam. Hold on, hold on. This is about to be historic. This is good. This is historic. This is good. I said I could be wrong. <laughs> so if you know you could be wrong, then why are you trying to debate it? This is my pet peeve. It's one thing to be ignorant about something, and that's fine. We don't all know everything about fucking everything, so it's okay to not know some things. But to be so, you know, arrogant and be like, no, 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 that's not right. When when you don't even know what the fuck you talking about, like oh I can't stand people like that. It's not on. You won't see it on like a storefront. Yeah, You'll there. see it. Take a picture it's every, during an argument. It's everywhere because that means there's like that's for like, sale. Yeah. You can lease. Two less. No, it's not on houses. No, it's not. On, that's what I'm saying. It's not on houses. Well, well, I still be could a, be wrong, but it's random. It's, so if you know you could be wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. why are you still arguing your point? Around. Yeah, but but is there a number? No. Yeah. It literally yes, just says there that. are numbers. Two left. Two left. What does two left mean? I don't even know who the fuck you contact. It's literally it means like oh yeah this is for sale. If I saw it on Windows, I'd be like oh yeah that must be a place that's available. Yeah, but you see that you see that shit everywhere like on buildings on like signs everywhere. Yo, get shook. We need shub. Listen, what I loved is your confidence going yeah, into that. Yeah. That's that was my favorite. Yeah, moon confidence. You saw that? You did have moon confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I could be wrong. Nah, it's like, there's some moon So why are you still arguing? You know, it you just says, okay. too late. Oh, yeah. shit. It's the least. Damn it! What? With his accent, he's like, I know. That guy was talking to shit. Bro, what a dumbass. And he wasn't joking. That wasn't some bit. You can tell he legit thought it meant toilet. Fuck me dead. Seriously, how embarrassing is that? So then he goes from one bullshit take to another, and this one was really random. It came out of left field. National service. <laughs> I mean, kind of caricature of ourselves. Don't you, don't awesome. you think, listen, I'm not having a fucking opinion. Listen, <laughs> don't you feel as if every american should do some form of national service but i do i do like this idea like right out of high school one year one year do something i don't give a fuck you can go look after what was it that uh, sebastian said he was like you don't necessarily have to do foreign it doesn't have to be military he's like i don't support military service but he was like national service working domestically with the united states go repair a fucking you know national park for the park take all the people from beverly hills make them work on the border wall i believe that have them understand what the fuck is going on yeah but like we know if that was in place then all the rich people will have their kids just like ah oh, you just have to go to some easy place they're always going to do that but at least we get an idea of what i think you should make some sacrifice to be part of the country it's very easy just to just accept all the beautiful things that it has and i think if you, if you just put a fucking what a, a year a year of your life i wish they I did. do have I, a lot my of my dad on the did table. It, i didn't do it and i regret it now at 39 years old 18 and 19. 18, 19. So look, here's the thing. I don't actually have like a firm position on what he's saying here, but the fact that it's coming from him is just so fucking cringe. Schultze would literally be the last one to offer up his time in service of his country. He's a spoiled brat mm. who likes to get high in the middle of the day and pretend oh, that it's a podcast. And the funniest part is... There's absolutely nothing stopping him from volunteering his time and efforts in service of his country. Like you said, it doesn't have to be in the armed services. It could just be domestic. Millions of Americans volunteer their time to their communities every week. So if you're so passionate about it, Schultz, what's stopping you from doing something about it right now? Mm. But seriously, imagine Schultz rocking up to the armed services to sign up wearing his short skinny jeans and cute skate shoes. Damn. Well, these days, maybe they would sign him up. He's probably onto something here. But anyway, after all that, he tries to pin down Gillis for being a diva. And I thought this bit was really telling because instead of outing Shane Gillis for being a princess, what it really showed us is just how petty Schultz and his crew really are. Basically, they're trying to get Gillis to admit to being demanding and it kind of backfires on them. What is your one bougie thing? What is your one thing that it's oh, like? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, for I'm you. a little bit. I'm a little bit like I wouldn't want people to know. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I can't. Sure they know. I have first class flights. Have to do first class yeah. so you can read your Steinbeck. I was really impressed with that. <sighs> Shut up. Oh, oh, what's what's, what's, what's the right. other bougie for, for long haul flights? Anything over six hours? I'm. I'm not doing the economy. Is it like okay? Obviously, the comfort of first class. Is there anything? 
Is there anything well, you're like, Ugh, I didn't know that I was this guy, and then you experience it, and you're like, now I kind of have to be this guy? No. Really? No. Hotels you don't care? You don't have to stay at a nice hotel? Hotels. Okay, yeah. so they put the final lines a little. <laughs> but no, it, it was like, I thought I was like, I don't care where I stay, and then I got in the worst hotel possible. And right? I, I like called my manager, and I was like, all right, can we, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like the worst hotel possible. Yeah. Like motel, like you park in front of the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what do you demand right now? Nothing. You have a rider? No. Any I can't, snack? I can't, any snack? snack? I can't figure you out. In my green room, I get fruit and hummus. Hummus is good. And Solid. Bud Light and White Claws. Solid. But mm. that was just my manager came up with that. I <laughs> cannot <laughs> figure it out. That's a I can't figure you out. Why? That is a writer, but he said he didn't come up. I didn't do that. She just did it. She yeah. knows. But it's a nice, it's a nice slug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but it's like, what else? You want steak dinners and shit. Well, I want chicken and steak because no, I don't want to just eat pizza. Yeah, you see the difference? I don't want to eat pizza. Yeah. You That's see the difference pizza. between hummus and white claws? What do we start with? Between we have a fucking steak. hummus platter that's hummus there platter. all the time. No, you start with that. His whole rider is just hummus <laughs> and white claw. So it's a, there's a difference. And what are you ordering for dinner? That's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm... That shit is crazy. What's going on here? What was up? Nothing's got to be... Boring. You've got some money. There's got to be a thing. It's, he's embarrassed to be remotely demanding. I would never be demanding. See? Out of shame. Ever. Now, now, the perception, I mean, hopefully I get there. The perception of bougie is <laughs> worse than like, the perception I of gay. Like oh, that's shame. interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so this is the... I have one pair of pants. These shoes stink. I've been wearing them for three months. <laughs> That's a three-month white sneaker? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, like I said, they just expose themselves. Shane Gillis is just a regular dude whose career really took off after he got sacked from SNL and Rogan helped him get his name out there. But he's always been funny and he's always had a strong following, so he probably would have made it big anyway, even without Rogan. You can tell he's just an ordinary guy. He's not a pretentious fucking tryhard like Schultzy and his boy band. If Shane's earning good money and he's flying I around. was literally thinking that as I'm watching this. Like, Andrew was so pretentious. Like, he just has this self-importance. Like, he's better than everybody. So, that's just such a turn-off. And it's just, it makes all of this so unfunny. <laughs> like, his just every time I watch clips of him, I'm just like... It's just... It's so off-putting. The lot, there's nothing wrong with flying first class. It's his money, so who gives a fuck? But nobody... And I mean absolutely nobody flies quite like Bert Kreischer does. I remember one time we pulled up and the, the line for the line to get to the airport was I'm talking, it looked like like someone lit up a Christmas tree house. Like like they're all the, it's just a string of lines, right? Mm, it was all animals. Around this pulpita. And we pulled around and we missed all of it. We pulled to the other totally the other side of the airport. You go in, you sit down, you have a few drinks, you get there an hour and a half, you can get there five minutes before your flight and then just they'll grab you score, yeah. they take your id they check you in they check all your luggage then they grab you they take you through their tsa so it's, it, there's no line it's not a line at all you walk in they put you in a, a seven series bmw or a escalade and they drive you on the tarmac over next to the plane i, I did this <laughs> only one time though okay i wanted to treat myself but i i did this when I flew with Air France. I, I flew their first class flight, and yeah, this was my experience. And then you enter the stairs. You know when you, you check your bags, and then they, and then when you land, they bring them up that flight of stairs. Yeah, to you. yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk up those stairs, and you board the plane. And they like walk you to customs. Gangster. Damn. So now, if there's a nuclear war, like, you're going to be in the bunker. Line. You're one oh. of those people. Oh, yeah. No, listen. Here's the deal. Do you know who it's... killed JFK? <sighs> but yeah, back to Andrew Schultz. Yet again, we have another example of a cringe comedian with zero self awareness But I'm normally fly business. Andrew I don't do first class often. Andrew his love for his country and declaring his regret for reason. not having served when he was younger to grilling Shane Gillis for not being a demanding diva like he is. The guy's all over the place. He's out of control. And it reminded me of that time where Louis C.K. called out Shane Gillis for doing too many ad reads and then switching the podcast over to Patreon to make people pay, I played this clip in a previous video as an outro, but I didn't actually talk about it. So here, take a look. So let's do this. Yeah. We're going to read some ads. Okay. All right. And then we're going to switch over to the Patreon for the last part. So join the Patreon if you want. Why do you switch? Why do you make them go on Patreon? That way, 
That it, way less. It's good. You make. You need the money. Yes. <laughs> really? The no, ads and the Patreon? Okay. You're gonna make it less than ads Hold and on. then switch to Patreon? Hold on. Wait, ads on Patreon? This, 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 this is that. like when I watch a fucking fight on the <laughs> zone, which I pay Does for, it. and there's a fucking ad between the rounds. No, Hold on. Right. Is it subscription or is it fucking Holy ads? Shit, there's yeah, three wrong. ads. Hold on. <laughs> you, what? Yeah, well, you don't have to put this on Patreon. Nah, yeah, I I think that's that's fucked because people are already paying and Patreon. They just rolled out this feature where you could charge for posts, and I'm just like that. That makes me roll my eyes when I see it. And and the crazy part about it is every time I'm making a new post now, they automatically check the box for like it's like they want me to charge my Patreon people like more money for an extra video, and I'm like. They're already paying. <laughs> like, this is a lot. So I didn't know there was an option where you could put ads on, on Patreon as well. Like, that. that's too much. We you don't have to. You don't need this. Or maybe he it. included the ad in the video himself, like in the editing. Hey, Matt, Matt, Matt and Sean need it. I'll, oh, I'll yeah. tell you, how much do you get for Patreon? How much really? You, I'll tell you. Tell me. How and much do you think you'll make on this on Patreon? If, if 1,000 people join. Yeah. The Patreon. That's it's five dollars a month. It's five thousand dollars a month, and then you Times think they 12. just stay there, and then yeah, they like it. But you think good. a thousand people will join your Patreon? Five thousand new people <laughs> because of this? Oh, I wish you would stop this, guys. <laughs> I will support the greatest history podcast. Five thousand dollars a month, <laughs> guys, to keep this content. Free. This could be the greatest history podcast of all time, and thank Christ, it's it's brought to you by Manscaped. What are you betting on, Sean? What have you won lately? I should have been on Cheeto Vera versus. Uh, Speed this up. Yeah, this is. This is such a mistake to try to do that. It's honest. okay. Made us wild. I fucking hate this now. I know. We live in fools. Uh, you have no idea. I think Louis was a bit harsh on Gillis here. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing ad reads. Sometimes they get a bit too much and go on forever. But if it's free content, I guess you should expect to see some ads. But Louis is definitely right about there being too many ads when paying for a subscription service. If I'm watching a pay per view <coughs> event like UFC or a boxing bout or whatever. I don't want to see any fucking ads. Exactly. That shit is expensive as it is. They should be making enough money off it without having to play heaps of ads. But the more interesting takeaway for me after seeing that Louis C.K. clip was that Gillis was more angry at himself than anything. He straight away blamed himself and internalized it. So yeah, again, I don't think he really did anything wrong there. Louis C.K. is probably just old school like that. But it definitely shows that Shane has self-awareness and he didn't externalize the blame like most of these puppets do. He took it on the chin. And I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. As you can tell, I'm a fan of Shane Gillis. He doesn't overhype everything like Schultz does and all these other Muppets who came up through Rogan's nutsack. And for yeah. me, that's the difference between being funny and being cringe. Anyway, let me know what you... What is all this? In love again, yeah. I will be sure that ever. And if I ever fall in love again, yeah. I will be sure Damn, he does not fuck with Andrew at all. Andrew and his bandmates, as he called them. Uh, but I'm a bit disappointed, though, because I thought that they were going to touch more on the whole Down Syndrome joke. Because that's what I inquired about when I reacted to the other video. And someone told me to react to this vid um, because they said that, oh, it goes over what happened when Shane was on their podcast. Um, and, yeah, I wanted to know what was going on with that Down Syndrome joke because he seemed very irritated when they when they brought that up and he was like that's not funny so I was like oh I'm going to see that whole clip so maybe I'll just have to look it up on my own but anyway uh yeah I just don't think Andrew is funny though <laughs> you know at all and you know I know a lot of people love him he has a lot of followers I'm sure he's doing really well good for him okay and his fanboys they love to to glaze this man to the high heavens okay and y'all can continue to ride his dick into the sunset okay congrats nobody cares that you love him and you think he's so hilarious my opinion is I don't think he's funny okay so when I'm speaking on him and the situation with, with people on his podcast and whatnot I'm gonna bring that up <laughs> Because that's my opinion on what the fuck I'm watching. And I don't think he's funny. All right. But I was interested in uh, Shane's appearance on here because it seemed like there was a bit 
of a, I don't want to say tension, but uh, yeah, it just seems like they, they were not meshing the best. Because I've also seen Shane on other podcasts. Um, I saw when he was on Theo Vaughn's podcast and a few others. And that's someone who I feel like does edgy humor perfect. I love Theo. I watch him all the time. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like he makes racist jokes well, <laughs> you know, because he's actually funny with his delivery. Um, and he's not just being offensive just for the sake of being offensive. And he, he's not a try hard and he doesn't come across pretentious at all. So, yeah, I just don't like Andrew style. So, yeah, just my opinion on that. Uh, but, yeah, I think we can close out this whole Andrew saga. <laughs> Nothing else to report unless something else crazy happens with him. But, anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.